this is a subject that I've heard a lot about and that a lot of strength coaches will um, talk about in the negative fashion without taking a little bit more insight into what its import is. And that is the topic of, with regards to back exercises, of the movement of top rock. And if people aren't familiar with what top rock is, it just means creating a little bit of momentum or a little bit of in inertia to start the bar's movement off, especially when it gets heavy, in order to complete your repetition. Now a lot of people when they do this and they go through a top rock, sometimes they lose tension in the upper back musculature so that it doesn't have the effect that we're looking for. So the movement all of a sudden looks like it's cheating and for many cases doing things with a top rock would constitute cheating because of how it's being performed. So this is a better way to do it without having that forfeit of tension when you go through the movement. First I'll show you the bad way, if I can. You'll see somebody come in. and do a bent over roll where it's just completely spastic and jerky like that, right? Basically, they're meeting the bar in the middle of its path without any sort of tension being maintained, even if their back stays flat. It's not gonna do anything to hit the, the upper back musculature, and it's not gonna promote a really sound, technically, a sound lift. So, instead, you've gotta really be discerning as to how much, how well you time it, and how much movement you go through with the lumbar vertebrae while maintaining a flat spine at the same time. So of course, there's never gonna be a position where you wanna be round like that. You wanna keep that natural arch or slightly more than neutral spine slant arch in the back. But you gotta make sure that the tension is never removed from the upper back. So, you go through your pull. In my eyes, what I just did there is much more permissible and it wouldn't count as cheating because the movement is still being dominated by the upper back and there's no incredible amounts of momentum that are, that are entering that lift. Now the alternative, which is what a lot of strength coaches will say, maybe to a beginning client or maybe to all of their clients, is that when they go through a movement like this, there should be absolutely no top rock whatsoever. And that's not something I agree with either because what happens is, your back muscles are nice and strong, or they're, they're much larger than your arm muscles. So when you try to do a movement like this, at lighter loads, like what that is for me, it's okay. I can still dictate the movement with my upper back, but there's gonna be a ceiling on how much my arms can carry. And this doesn't only apply to a bent over row, it applies to a seated row position where people will be here and they do it fixed without any sort of movement of the lower and upper spine too to start the movement off. 80, 90, 100 pounds and then you're going to be stuck not being able to move the weight by rowing it in with your arms after you've retracted your shoulders because it's too heavy. You have to engage more back muscles in order to do this, especially if your goal is hypertrophy oriented and you're looking to build muscle. That's the only way you're going to be able to enable yourself to lift a significant amount of weight and still have your back stay involved with the lift. So, my conclusion is that top rock, when it's done within reason, is something that needs to be incorporated into heavy upper back dominant lifts. You have to not be stupid about it and lift with some kind of crazy momentum filled top rock. It has to be something that's used in moderation. But once the weight starts going up, you're going to need to incorporate that light top rock and all of your movements that are pull oriented, your bent over rows, your seated rows, even a little bit in your lat pull down, just enough in moderation without it looking ridiculous. So that's it.